hello and welcome to Just Sneaky Amore. In this video, I'm so excited to show you how to sew these classy and elegant pants. This straight leg design starts with an enhancing high sitting waistband with loops, some beautiful side pockets, and a smart ironed crease at the front. Both upscale and relaxed, you're gonna love making and wearing these pants. So we're gonna use the highly requested Darcy Pants PDF sewing pattern. Look at yours at the link below in the description and let's start. Here are the materials we'll need. For these pants here, I'm using a 10 cell twill fabric. It's quite lightweight while still having a heaviness to it that helps keep the right fit and the drape of the pants. However, I have made these in a crepe fabric and I do prefer that a little bit more because of how it looks after multiple washes. So my recommendation for your fabric choice would be a light to medium weight woven fabric from a natural fiber or a blend. This would be crepe, gabardine, linen, cotton, or rayon. Cut out your pattern pieces from your fabric and make sure to transfer all of the marks to make it easier to sew in the process. And there are detailed instructions on exactly how to do this in your instructional booklet that comes with your pattern. So here are the pattern pieces that we have. The front, back, side pocket and pocket lining, the waistband, fly shield, and the fabric for the loops. Okay, let's get to sewing. Let's first create our center front crease on the pant legs. Take your front leg piece, wrong side up, and as you can see here, we have two marks for the pleats. Going by the farthest of the two marks from the side seam, fold in the side of the pants evenly. Do the same at the bottom of the leg as well. Make sure that the bottom edge matches up, and we're gonna have some fabric here that doesn't match up in the middle of the leg. Now press. Test your fabric first, as you might wanna use a pressing cloth to prevent your fabric from leaving any traces of the iron. You can even stitch this crease here after pressing so it'll hold better and so it'll be easier to press at the right spot later on. And so we have created the crease for our entire length of our pant. Do the same to the other leg. Apply interfacing to the pocket opening edge on the wrong side of the front. Take your pocket lining and right sides together, line it up with the front leg and pin. The side seam should match up with the side seam of the pant leg. And now, sew the side seam. Sew the pocket edge on the interface side of the opening. Open up our new seam, making sure that the seam allowances are facing towards the pocket lining and understitch two millimeters or an eighth of an inch from the seam line. After understitching, I always trim the seam allowances to about half so that they lay nicely. Now press your open seam you just understitched. And then fold the pocket lining into the inside with the side seam being even and press the pocket opening edge. See how beautifully flat and neat it is? That's exactly what we want. Take your side pocket piece and notice the notches here and here. Now place your front pant leg over it, wrong sides together, matching up our notches at the waist and the side. Pin along the pocket opening. Now flip the fabric and as you can see all of our pieces line up perfectly together. We'll pin this here so that nothing moves around in the sewing process and now we're going to sew the pocket edge. Once we sew and finish the pocket edge, we can press again and flatten everything. Now we need to secure the pocket at the top and the side. Before we do that though, let's create a pleat at the waistline edge. Take your crease here, fold it towards the pocket, and pin along with the pocket. If you like, you can press about 10 centimeters down to solidify this shape. If you press without a pressing cloth, your fabric may show some traces of it, and you can easily fix this by pressing from the other side, but it's also a good idea to have your pressing cloth always at hand. We'll secure the pocket and pleat at the waist. Simply begin with a back stitch and sew at 5mm from the edge. Next, we're going to prep our fly. To the right pant leg on the wrong side, apply interfacing on the fly right up to the notch here. Press it quickly first, then cut around the contour and then fuse it securely. On the left pant leg, measure up 1.5 to 2 centimeters of the underlapping facing and cut it off just like so. Now let's move on to prepping the back pieces. Transfer the dart points to both back pant legs. Fold in half, matching up the notches at the waist and pin. Then pin at the dart point and take out your marking pin inside. 
Then starting one centimeter above the dart point, mark up to the notch to create a dart line, which we're gonna sew. Repeat for the other pant leg. Check that you have two symmetrical legs. Now sew your darts. Start sewing one to two millimeters behind the notch, backstitch and continue sewing. It doesn't matter whether you sew from the top or the bottom of your dart. My simple rule is do what you find works best for you. Some people tie a knot with the threads at the point, but I don't do it and I never have any problems with it as I sew quite on the edge. The darts come out perfectly and never come undone. So let me show you how to sew from the point of the dart up. When you do this, you have a little bit more control over where your dart ends, which helps create perfectly symmetrical darts. And this can be more difficult when you do it from the wide top to the point. As you can see, I sewed a few stitches along the edge here as well, which will create that ideal point with no threads peeking out. First, press the darts flat and then open the darts up and as it should always be, press your darts towards the center of your project. Here, it'll be towards the center back. Press from the right side as well. If you see this little wave or bubble here at the point, not to worry, our butt has a natural curve, which is exactly why we're making the darts in the first place. The next step is to serge all the edges of our details, both front and back, all except the waistline. You want to make sure that you aren't cutting off the notches so that they will still be visible. Keep checking on your stitches so that they don't stretch or pull on the fabric in any way. Here's the front piece with the zipper fly. Go very slow and steady, following the curve of your piece. Raise your machine foot and place it over the fabric, over and over again so that your curve stays curved. You can make a small fold at the corner to straighten out the fabric for your machine foot while you serge, and then even it back out. And sew on top of the right side of your fabric so that the right side of the serger finish is visible. Now everything we just surged, we're going to thoroughly press to flatten and almost embed the threads into the fabric. At the crotch area, you can pull a little on the fabric to straighten it out, so when we put it back in place, you'll see we've created some ease, which will help the pants sit beautifully on the curves of your body. After you've pressed, you can see if your fabric has gathered up or stretched out because of your stitch. If that's happened, I recommend resetting your serger and sewing again, because even if you press it all out at this stage, the stitch will pull on the other seams that we create later on. To prep our zipper, all we need to do is lightly press it to get rid of any waviness and pre-shrink it with some heat. Place the two front pieces, right sides together, matching up at the front crotch seam and the notches at the waist. One of our pieces is slightly smaller than the other one. Now, mark 2 cm up from the corner of our zipper opening and take a pin 1 cm from the edge of these seam allowances and what we'll do here is sew this crotch seam right here at 1 cm seam allowances. Here's what the sewed front crotch seam looks like. And now let's quickly press it smooth, making sure that everything is lining up evenly and flat. Open up that same pant leg with the inner face to fly facing. Open it to the right side and smooth it out to where you can feel the crotch seam. And using a pressing cloth, we're now going to press this crease. Taking out your pin here, flip up the zipper opening and place the zipper tape down right sides together to the pant leg, lining up the bottom edges and pin. Now sew this section here, either right on the edge or stepping away from it a bit. Open the zipper up when you need to to finish. Then open up the fabric as we're going to do some top stitching right next to the zipper. Switch your machine foot to a one-sided zipper foot. If you're not confident in sewing zippers yet, you can help yourself by lining up the fabric like so and pinning it along the length of the zipper. You can even base stitch it by hand to keep it secure before sewing on the machine. Because of many years of doing this, I almost never do base stitching, so if you're confident in your skills, go ahead and fold the underlapping facing away and top stitch the fold line right next to the zipper teeth. And here's what we have. After we top stitch this here, cover the zipper with the overlapping detail, evening it out along the folded edge and pin. Here, match it to the notch at the waistline. Then we'll sew the other side of the zipper to the facing. I'll start sewing a little bit down below from the top edge, and then I'll go back and open up the zipper to finish that section. Flip it around, unpin the top section, pull open the zipper, and finish off. 
Take our fly top stitch template and marking right from where our seam starts, place it right along the fold about 3mm below that point. Mark the outline of the template and this is what we're going to top stitch on the right pant leg. You can base stitch before sewing on the machine for some added accuracy. Make a 3 stitch back stitch and then carefully and slowly rounding out to the line we'll sew. What I like to do is secure my marked line with some pins to keep the fabric in the needed place. So keep moving the fabric around slowly, keeping the pockets away, and evenly sew. Now take your fly shield, fold it in half right sides together, and sew the slanted edge with 5mm seam allowances. Flip it out and press it flat. Then finish the raw edge. Press it flat again, and then we'll move on to pinning the fly shield over the zipper on the underlapping side. Sew it to the seam allowances carefully. We're going to sew the fly shield to the underlapping side to the seam allowances on the wrong side of the fabric. Now we need to sew this down here so it won't open up. So take the bottom edge, flip it over, and sew the lower corner down like so. If you open up your zipper, you'll see how beautifully and evenly everything is laying. Place the front and back sides of the pant legs right sides together, first matching up our notches, then pin the side seams, and then the inseams. The back inseam is a little shorter than the front inseam by about 5mm, so just a bit of stretching is needed. And to the sewing machine. Sew with 1.2 seam allowances, starting with the side seam. Now to the inseam. And repeat for the other side seam. Then press the side seams open. I'm also pressing under the seam right away so that no imprints of the seam are visible on the other side of the fabric. You can use a piece of paper to prevent that too. Then press the inseams. And don't forget to use your wooden tailor's clapper or a folded up towel to cool the fabric. After we press the side seams and inseams, place your pant leg so that the back side is facing up towards you. Then place one leg inside the other, right sides together. Here we're going to pin the crotch seam, starting at the bottom, going all around. Then stitch the crotch seam. Start where our previous front seam is, and going right into that seam, sew the crotch seam. Some brands of pants sew the crotch seam twice over so it'll be stronger and won't pop or rip. So if you'd like to do that, which is recommended, make sure that you are either going right into your first seam, or just one millimeter next to it, like so, and press. Finish the long side of your loop string and press it flat. Now take the raw edge and fold it in about a third of the way up, or about 1cm. You can mark out a line here to help yourself. Then fold the finished edge down to the bottom fold, just barely grazing it not to peek out from underneath, and press to keep the shape. Personally, this is how I like to make belt loops. They're not too thick, they're even with each other, and they're easy to make. Top stitch both edges of the loop strip from the right side, about 2-3mm from the folded edge. And then cut your strip into kneaded lengths using a loop paper pattern piece as a template. Cut one and then use that first one as a guide for all of your loops. You'll need five. There's some extra length here just in case. Press all of your loops flat. Now take your pants and place one loop to the waist of the pant right sides together, putting the first one next to the pleats at the front. Then add the back darts on both sides and then at the center back seam. We need to make a stitch half a centimeter from the edge and a second stitch 1.5 centimeters from the edge. The top stitch will go right into the seam and the bottom one will hold our loop in place. Sew the loops just like so. These marking lines on the machine plate will help you sew everything at the same distance. Once you're done, hold the loop up and you'll see that the loop will be 1 centimeter on the pant and the rest will be on the waistband. Repeat for all your loops, taking care of the excess thread. Now for the waistband, apply interfacing to the entire piece. Then fold it in half, lengthwise, wrong sides together, and press. You can press it lightly at the beginning all around, and then we're going to give shape to the belt by firmly pressing and carefully stretching out a curve on the other end. Some fabrics will be easier to manipulate and others don't like this so much. Now pin the waistband to the waist of the pants right sides together, matching up the marks at the edge of the fly shield, side seams, and center back. Now sew the waistband carefully and steady for a pretty seam. 
After you sew the waistband, check right away whether it's sewn at an even distance at the front. The waistband folded inch should match up with itself. Next, we're going to serge the opposite side of the waistband, pressing the finished inch to embed the threads. And turn the pants wrong side up, then press the seam allowances on their own. If you see that your darts turn the other way to prevent it from being too bulky, you can simply fix this by pinning it to the other end and return to sew it back up. Now we're going to make some pretty corners. Fold the ends of the waistband in half right sides together with the seam allowances themselves pointing up and matching each other on both sides of the waistband and pin it like so. Do the same to the other corner at the waistband, but here you can also leave it without folding the seam allowances up on the front. While on the inside, do make sure that the seam allowances are folded nicely. Sew here about 1 to 2 millimeters away from the fly edge of our zipper, just like so. When you fold it like it is, you'll have a pretty edge here. And if you sewed right on the fly, it wouldn't have this comfortably folded edge. And do the same on the other corner. I like this method here when one side has a surged edge because it doesn't create a bulky fold. Turn the corners of your waistband right sides out. You'll see that it comes out very nicely here. And you can help yourself using a pin. Now pin the waistband on its bottom edge all around with the surged edge lying flat and covering the waistline inside of the pants just like so. Repeat for the other side. This section at the start here needs to be folded in so that the zipper will stop at the right spot and so that the inside of our pants will look beautiful as well. Check that everything comes together evenly and now pin all around the waistband. The seam allowances are facing up and the surged edge is facing down. Now sew the waistband. You can either sew it right into the crease if you don't want visible seams, but I'm going to top stitch all around. Choose where you want your stitch to go, 1 to 3 millimeters away from the edge, then slow and steady sew all around. Here's what we have. The top stitch is 1 millimeter from the edge and the back side is just a bit higher than the surged edge we have. I like using this method because it's quick to do, it looks neat and elegant, and doesn't create unneeded bulk at the waist. Now because I want to top stitch all around the band, I'll trim off the threads and start right at the corner. Where you feel that it's thicker, manually move your needle to make sure that your stitches stay even, like so. Press your waistband, cooling it down for a professional look, and now evenly flip up your belt loops, folding the edge of the loop and pinning it to the waistband like so. There's no need to pull the loops tight, as your belt won't go through. Sew the loops in place at the top folded edge, back stitching in place to secure, and cutting the excess thread. And repeat for all your loops. When you sew, pull the thread away from your garment so they won't get tangled up with anything. For the closure, you can sew a loop and a button, but I'm going to sew a simple hook and eye for a minimal look. The eye goes on the underlapping end, and matching the hook, I'll sew it on the overlapping side, making sure that I'm not grabbing the threads of the fabric on the right side of the pants. And before we complete the finishing step, a beautiful bind hem, have a fitting here to decide the length of your pants. For me, that's going to be 102 centimeters at the side, just like in the pattern. So for a 4 centimeter hem, I'll measure up 8 centimeters from the bottom surged edge all around the pant. Now we're going to fold the bottom edge towards the wrong side, up to the marked line, pin and press it flat. Then take a needle and thread, and with a blind hem, hand stitch the bottom edge of our pants. Capture a few threads from one side of the fabric and a couple threads from the other side of the fabric and continue like this all around. You'll see tiny little dots here and there on the right side of your pants, which will all disappear once we give it a nice press. And that's the final step. Press your center fold once more, give your garment a finishing press like always, and we are done with our elegant Darcy pants. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to sew these pants yourself. I know you'll love them. You can get the PDF downloadable sewing pattern that I used at the link in the description of this video. And happy sewing!